Work is good and unemployment is bad. Jobs mean productivity, prosperity and economic growth. Not having one means benefits and struggle and a poor quality of life. Full employment is the goal. Statistics are the measure. This is the logic employed by governments the world over when it comes to work and unemployment, particularly those like the UK, run by right-leaning parties, and never more so than when the Office for National Statistics, ONS, released the latest round of employment figures, as they did this week. In the UK, employment is at a record high, rising at a similar rate in Scotland, with 76.3% and 74.3% respectively of working age adults in work between September and November 2019. The rise follows similar increases in previous reports. Politicians celebrate, a new data point is plotted on a graph, workers keep on slogging and the country moves on, apparently more buoyant and prosperous than it was three months ago. But behind such figures is a truth that is becomingly increasingly hard to ignore, that the measures of old mean little in today's unequal, poverty-marred society where work no longer pays and jobs for life are few and far between. We might be going out to work of a morning, but it no longer follows that we're paid enough to live on, that our work is secure and dignified, or that we'll still be going to the same job next week, month or year. Rises in employment are little cause for celebration if they don't take account of the kind of employment they measure. Take, for example, the most recent ONS statistics on zero-hours contracts, which show 884,000 people in Britain employed with no guarantee of any work at all. These figures show an epidemic when compared to the 168,000 people on such contracts in 2010. What they don't show is the impact that such insecurity and precarity has on someone's life. Shifts cancelled with an hour's notice, no way to plan ahead financially, in direct competition with colleagues for work and little possibility of taking on a second job when you're permanently at the whim of your first one. The top-line success of Britain's employment figures includes these people. It also includes, when you dig deeper, a record increase in women working full-time, thought to be driving the overall growth. With feminists having long decried the low-paid, part-time work women find themselves locked in, and the undervaluing of domestic work and care, you might expect this to be welcome. But within the rise of the nearly 4 million so-called WASPy women affected by changes to the state pension age which mean they will have to work until 66 instead of 60. According to the campaign, many report struggling to continue in their previous jobs due to health issues, in many cases, caused by the difficult work they've undertaken for more than 40 years. And crammed into this figure for more on this story, visit the news article link.